Thursday night football, uh, Giants travelling to the Washington, uh, both teams losing in week one. Um, I predicted the Washington football team to win this one. Um, well, and they did, just. Um, without, without the... Uh, without the um, troubles that uh, Washington have, obviously, with uh, Fitzmagic injured, Taylor Heineke stepping back in. Um, it was actually the Giants who opened the scoring. Dan Jones rushed in for a touchdown. And then he Heineke and the McLaurin. Um, I think that is a key partnership this year. Um, McLaurin is a, is a good wide receiver. Um, and he showed that early couple of weeks of the season. They, them two connected. Um, and got, got Washington back. Uh, and then J.D. McKissick put Washington in the lead um, with, another, with another touchdown. Giants then came soaring back, took a 2017 lead. Uh, Dan Jones found Darius Slayton, field goal piece, put Giants into a 2023 lead. Uh, Dan Jones launched it into Slayton in the end zone, wide open, should have caught it. And it, that was a game game-changing moment. Um, which then only led to the Giants taking a six-point lead, 29-23 um, up. And then Heineke found McKissick drive up the field onto the Giants' 20-yard line. Heineke did brilliantly in the pocket, threw it to Ricky Seals uh, Jones for a touchdown. And then uh, he Heineke actually got the ball back, then got picked, and then Giants converted their field goal. And it was just went just went from there, really. It was a really, really close game. A um, couple of stats. Taylor Heineke, 34 out of 46 completions. So he, do, he does love a throw uh, to McLaurin. Total of 336 yards. Dan Jones, pretty, pretty solid game for him as well, considering circumstances. 22 out of 32 completions. Total of 249 yards. Um, and yeah, the, the game went from there, really. I always thought Washington were going to be one of those teams that will beat the Giants at home. Um, however, I've got a discussion point here for you, Adam. Um, with, well, with Fitzmagic injured and obviously potentially coming to the end of his career, um, we don't. I don't know the full extent of the injury. Do you know the full extent of what he did? No, he, uh, we don't know exactly, but it does look like he's going to be out for a significant period of time. And, you know, it's like the older you get, the longer it takes to recover from injuries that a few years ago, you may have recovered a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, my discussion point was, do you think it is important in upcoming drafts, say next year, for Washington to get a foot, to get a rookie quarterback coming through or to eventually replace Heineke? Or do you wait a couple of years and just keep Heineke and sort of get a lower end backup quarterback? It, it all depends on how Washington perform. I think a key thing here with Washington is simply what other areas can they improve? I think it's very easy for us to focus on the quarterback position where in, in other teams, for example, have issues with the defence, offensive line, etc. Heineke came in, done really well for Washington towards the end of last season, ran the Bucks close in the playoffs. Of course, he's going to have hit and miss games, but I think it's it's a season by season basis. We we don't expect Fitz Magic to be at Washington past this season, so it does seem a bit of a waste. And it it all depends how the season goes. I think each time the Reds, uh, say football team, sorry, lose, the case for a new quarterback gets stronger. And but but so it also it's his career is dependent on luck, uh, Brad. And I'm glad that you've really highlighted uh, the, how this this went. From the point of view, the, the for me, the Giants should have won this game. Yes, the Washington football team are a more established team. But you look at the mistakes, as I say, the, the, the wide receiver making that drop. And the, the biggest, the two biggest moments for me, the drop wide open was huge. But then you've got it, the, the interception, which is uh, from the Giants defence, brilliant. Then only getting three points. I always feel with turnovers, you've got to be making turnovers into touchdowns. Mm. And then, of course, the worst one was the last minute uh, field goal. All the Giants special teams had to do was to stay back. They literally didn't have to put pressure on the kicker because he missed. And then, but one of them jumped offside. And then before you know it, that that's a flag. The kick gets moved further forwards. And then, of course, it's, an, it's, a, it's a lifeline that the, the football team kicker shouldn't have had. And that's um, a valuable win for 
the, the Giants out the window. So Dan Jones was a let down all three sides, all sides of the ball on that occasion. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, so what's your view about the, um, very, very quickly, about the uh, quarterback situation? Do you think give Heineke a bit of time? Um, yeah, I mean, Heineke, there's no reason why Heineke can um, sort of cement that quarterback position. Um, as you said, as you said, he did very well in the playoffs and sort of back end of last season. Um, he wasn't terrible when he came in against the Chargers, to be fair to him. Um it was just one of them, one of them fourth quarters from Herbert where everything just connected and won won us the game. Um, yeah, I, I don't see I don't see why Heineke can't cement that quarterback position for two, three, four years to come. Hmm. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see what happens in Washington with that position, certainly, especially even as the season goes on. 